Error theory is a cognitivist view of metaethics that was put forward by J.L. Mackey. His view is that moral judgments express beliefs that have truth value. However, he then claims that our moral judgments are false, hence the title error theory. We think we have true moral beliefs, but we really don't, because objective moral facts and duties do not exist in the real world, so our beliefs cannot correspond to anything objective. So we are in error for thinking we have true moral beliefs. This is not moral relativism, because Mackey doesn't assert our beliefs are true to us, or within a specific culture. He says our moral beliefs are false, because they do not correspond to anything objectively true or binding. Mackey gives three reasons objective moral facts and duties cannot exist, which are the challenge from relativity, queerness, and epistemology. His first argument is different cultures believe different views of morality. He claims this as evidence there are no objective moral facts all humans are aware of, since we come up with our own versions of morality, instead of us all tapping into objective moral facts and duties. He then argues, if there were objective values, then they would be entities, or qualities, or relations of a very strange sort, utterly different from anything else in the universe. Correspondingly, if we were aware of them, it would have to be by some special faculty, or moral perception or intuition utterly different from our ordinary ways of knowing everything else. In other words, they would be queer or strange in comparison to everything else we know that exists, because everything else can be studied empirically. Moral values would need to be independent of our beliefs, but also somehow accessible to us and give us reason to act. But Mackey claims this is unlike anything we experience or know of. Consider the fact that most things either give us reason to act like our own desires, things like thirst or anger, or they are independent of us and our desires and do not give us reason to act at all. But there is nothing that is independent of us and also gives us reason to act. Facts or properties that we are accustomed to, like physical properties, don't have demands or prescriptions for our actions built into them, like moral values and duties would. They are inherently descriptive and not prescriptive. Moral properties which are prescriptive properties, would tell us how things ought to be. Therefore, they would be queer and utterly unlike anything else. Therefore, it is unlikely they exist. His final argument is from epistemology, and a consequence of his prior argument. Since moral values and duties would be unlike any other known facts or properties, we cannot discover them through our five senses, and therefore, we would need a special faculty to know of them. However, to postulate a special faculty would be a travesty. So even if they exist, we would have no way of knowing or discovering them, since we cannot do so through empiricism. So from this, Mackey concludes, we have good reasons to reject the actual existence of objective moral facts. However, there are several problems with Mackey's objections. The first objection we already covered in our defense of moral realism. This is not really an argument against moral realism, in the same way that different cultures have different views on the shape of the earth, that doesn't entail science is subjective, and there is no objective shape of the earth we can study and learn about. And second, cultural differences on morality are not typically real moral differences, but factual differences. For example, some Islamic extremists do not believe women have souls, therefore it is okay to oppress them. They do not think slavery of what they call human is right, they merely have underlying factual errors in their thinking which transfers to moral ideas. Certain African tribes do not think it is actually good to murder infants, but believe that deformed infants are possessed by evil spirits or are actually evil spirits. They have factual errors which cause them to act as they do. It is their beliefs about facts, not morality, that causes them to think what ought to be done. The fact that people disagree only shows humans have not perfected our understanding of reality in our quest for the truth. This actually works against error theorists, because if they believe all humans are in error when they think objective moral facts and duties exist, why could it not be the case that many humans or cultures can simply be in error in understanding what is objectively true? Given the name error theory, as they think humans are in error, could the error just be that some people are incorrect in understanding what is morally objective? So it is pretty obvious disagreements between cultures is not evidence that objective moral facts and duties do not exist. 
especially if error theorists are willing to accept humans can be an error when it comes to ethics. The second and third objections do not work either, mainly because they assume the conclusion. The fact that objective moral values and duties would be different than anything else doesn't automatically mean they likely cannot exist. Mackey is assuming something he is trying to prove, namely naturalism. Because objective moral values and duties are unlike anything natural or descriptive, they cannot exist. Why? Because naturalism is true, so all things must be naturalistic and proven empirically. So objective moral values cannot exist, because they are unlike anything natural or descriptive. It is arguing in a circle. Just because objective moral values and duties are different from natural things, that doesn't de facto mean they cannot exist. As Andrew Fisher says, In making this assumption, we can see that Mackey's queerness argument is only as good as his defense of naturalism. He first needs to show naturalism is true and that rationalism is false. Only then can he infer that objective moral facts and duties are unlikely. Because the evidence we went over would challenge this idea that all that exists can only be natural. If we have good reason to think objective moral facts and duties exist, then it doesn't matter if they are queer to someone. We shouldn't just assume our worldview, but instead be open to the possibility there could be evidence for new facts and properties. Mackey is basically arguing like this. Premise 1. If naturalism and empiricism are likely, then torturing children for fun is not morally wrong. Premise 2. Naturalism and empiricism are likely. Therefore, torturing children for fun is not morally wrong. However, following G.E. Moore, we can employ something that has become known as a Moorean shift. Moore employed this argument against epistemic skeptics, people who believed we cannot know things about the external world. After several arguments, they concluded we cannot know things about the external world. We cannot know if we have two arms, or that the sun is in the sky, etc. Moore thinks if skepticism led to such absurd conclusions, there must be something wrong with skepticism. So he responded like this. Premise 1. I know I have two hands and the sun is in the sky. Premise 2. If skepticism is correct, I cannot know these things. Conclusion. Therefore, there is a problem in the skeptic's reasoning. Many philosophers argue we can apply this reasoning to error theory as well. Premise 1. Torturing children for fun is morally wrong. Premise 2. If error theory is correct, the claim that torturing children for fun is morally wrong would not be true. Conclusion. Therefore, there is a problem with error theory. The argument simply works to reverse Mackey's original argument, and in a sense argues from intuition. Since we know it is morally wrong to do things like torture children, it is more likely there is a problem with error theory, since it would infer such things are not objectively wrong. Are we in a sense assuming our conclusion if we were to argue like this? Well, that is debatable, since unlike error theorists, we can argue from intuition and the other arguments for moral realism. Plus, this was only done in response to the error theorist who started out by assuming his or her conclusion that naturalism is already true. It is in a sense just throwing it back at them. And unlike the error theorist, we can argue from intuition. The error theorist cannot argue naturalism is already true from intuition, because that is simply not the case. The atheist philosopher Benjamin Blake Watkins has formulated a version of this argument against all forms of normative anti-realism. Here he is to present it. Hello everyone, I'm here today because I want to discuss a question which is meta-ethical in the sense that it is about the meaning and truth of some of our normative statements. I'm using the word normative similar to the way inspiring philosophy has used the term prescriptive. Normative statements are any sentence using normative terms like should, ought, must, desirable, right, wrong, good, bad, better, best, for its own sake, and many more. I will assume that these terms all refer to the normative concept of a reason. A reason is any consideration which counts in favor of having some belief or performing some action. Reasons are given by facts. For example, the fact that some medicine would give me many more years of happy life gives me reason or accounts in favor of me taking this medicine. So how should we think about truths involving the normative concept of a reason? The question I want to focus on is, does anything really matter in the sense that we all have reasons to care about some things for their own sake? In other words, are there any objective normative truths? Many of us take it for granted that things like love and happiness are intrinsically good in the sense that we have strong reasons to respond to these things in some positive way. 
Many of us also believe that some things like irrationality, disability, and pain are intrinsically bad in the sense that we have strong reasons to respond to these things in some negative way. We often use normative concepts to make normative claims that, if true, would be true in an objective sense. Some claim is objectively true if its truth does not depend on the attitudes or responses of any subject. However, some people dissent from these common assumptions and claim that nothing is intrinsically good or intrinsically bad in the sense that we do not have reasons to care about anything for its own sake. In other words, there are no objective normative truths. If this view were true, then we would have no reason to respond to anything either positively or negatively because nothing really mattered. All of our normative judgments would be mistaken or worse, not even mistaken because they would be merely nonsense. In choosing this label, I intend to include views like subjectivism or internalism about reasons, normative nihilism or what inspiring philosophy has earlier called error theory, as well as normative non-cognitivism. I want to argue that the presumption against all these forms of normative anti-realism is very strong. Thus, the arguments for any form of it would have to be substantially powerful to move someone to adopt it. Similar claims are made by the normative nihilist J.L. Mackey. He says, quote, But since normative nihilism goes against assumptions ingrained in our thought and built into some of the ways in which language is used, since it conflicts with what is sometimes called common sense, it needs very solid support. It is not something we can accept lightly and casually and then quietly pass on. If we are to adopt this view, we must argue explicitly for it. Here's an argument for normative anti-realism. A. If there are any objective normative truths, then there are intrinsic features or properties of some things that give us reasons to care about them for their own sake. B. Nothing could give us reasons to care about anything for its own sake. Therefore, C. There are no objective normative truths. If we accepted the anti-realist conclusion in C, then we could validly infer that D we have no reason to prefer a life filled with many happy experiences to a life of unrelenting agony. And E, the fact that some argument is valid and has true premises gives us no reason to accept this argument's conclusion. If you're like me, then you probably find these implications hard to believe. A normative realist could similarly argue against these implausible implications. F, we have much more reason to prefer a life filled with happy experiences than a life of unrelenting agony. And G, the fact that some argument is valid and has true premises does give us decisive reason to accept this argument's conclusion. Therefore, H, there are some objective normative truths. Given the realist conclusion in H, one could validly infer I, some things have intrinsic features or properties which give us strong reasons to care about them for their own sake. My realist argument here is a Morian shift of the earlier anti-realist argument I gave. These two arguments are symmetric because each argument takes as premises the denial of the other argument's conclusions. The better argument, I argue, is the one whose premises are more plausible since both arguments are logically valid, supporting their conclusions equally well. Now which seems more plausible? F. We have more reason to prefer a life filled with happy experiences and a life of unrelenting agony, and G, the fact that some argument is valid and has true premises does give us decisive reason to accept this argument's conclusion, or should we accept B, nothing could give us reasons to care about anything for its own sake. F and G strike me as obviously more plausible than B, and I doubt my judgment would be idiosyncratic. Thus, it would seem unreasonable for someone to reject the former propositions on the basis of the latter, without some really convincing arguments. What we need from the normative anti-realist is some argument or set of arguments whose conclusions are B, but whose premises are more plausible than my F and G. My realist argument is clearest and most forceful when using these non-moral normative judgments, but it is not limited to them. We could also strengthen the plausibility of my realist argument by appealing to moral claims, which also appear self-evidently true on reflection. My realist argument here is really a challenge to normative anti-realists to overcome the implausible implications of their view. 
the strongest objection to normative anti-realism is put forcefully into a question. Why can't the intrinsic natures of something like the importance of evidence or the living of a full and happy life give us strong reasons to care about these things for their own sake? I do not believe normative anti-realists have any good reply to these questions. Finally, there is a problem with Mackey's entire argument. Mackey rejects non-cognitivism because when people say something like killing is wrong, they are not saying they desire or emotionally reject killing. They are stating something they think is true and can be true or false. Error theorist Richard Joyce says, What makes many philosophers, including many error theorists, uneasy about the non-cognitivist response is that it smacks of interpreting a discourse in an eccentric manner simply to avoid philosophical difficulties. In other words, error theorists accept cognitivism because it respects the face value or intuitive nature of our moral practice and words. So if they accept cognitivism on these grounds, then why are they rejecting realism? As Andrew Fisher says, after all, there is not only a presumptive argument in favor of cognitivism, there is a presumptive argument in favor of realism and in favor of truth. Most people say things like, it is a fact that killing is wrong, or it is true that taking hostages is bad. So if the error theorist's starting point is how people talk, then it seems ad hoc to favor cognitivism rather than realism or moral truth. So in conclusion, error theory begins by arguing from intuition regarding cognitivism, but then rejects realism even though it functions in the same way. Their arguments against realism do not actually show objective moral facts and duties cannot exist, or do not likely exist. Instead, they assume their conclusion and ironically ignore the possibility that different humans or cultures could just be in error, while stating humans are in error. There are so many problems with error theory that itself seems like nothing more than a huge error.